Um, so you lost out on the the menace to, to the uh, boys in the hood, right? Uh, role. The movie comes out, does well. Yes, does very well. You know, Ice Cube's uh, acting debut as well. Yeah. Uh, great movie. Yes. Incredible. But then here comes a movie called Menace to Society. Right. Now, from what I understand, the Hughes brothers had seen you in the Janet Jackson uh, Janet video. Janet Jackson and America's Most Wanted. America's Most Wanted. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you, you were doing like reenactments or yes, something? Yes, I did a reenactment. Aha. Okay. So how did that whole initial set of meetings come together? I was at the house not doing nothing. My mom was like, you need to go to school. I'm bored. She's like, you need to do something. I'm like, I go out in the, I go out in the, the middle of the grass like, God, please do something. I don't want to, I can't, I just, I need something to happen. My mom is telling me to go, go to some kind of junior college, community college. I'm like, oh God. So I get a, um, I get a phone call about a movie called Minister Society or whatever. So I'm at the house and my homeboy at the time, um, he's dead now, rest in peace, he got killed. Um, I'm at the house and I'm like, man, I need a ride to this, this audition or whatever or whatever. And he's like, all right. He didn't have no brakes on the car, nothing. Just a, it was like a El Dorado, no brakes, no registration, no nothing. So we, um, I'm half sleep. I get in the car. I'm like, man, whatever. We go to the thing. I get there to the audition. I'm in the lobby like that. I'm in the lobby. And then Alan Hughes come and say, are you, he's like Tyron. I was like, hey, what's up? Like, why you know my name like that though? I'm kind of confused. He's like, he was like, man, we've been looking for you for a long time. I said, what? He said, we've been looking for you for a long time. I, so I said, okay, well, wait a minute, me wipe my eye. Let me, let me, <laughs> maybe this is this could be serious. They looking for me. Okay, so I wipe my eye, go in the bathroom, put some water on my face, get myself together, come back out. And they're like, uh, yeah, man, um, we just want to don't 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 worry about too much. Just come in, you know what I'm saying? We just want to see how you look on camera and stuff like that or whatever. And I was like, okay. And um, they were saying, um, like, we're a big fan of yours. And um, I literally just said a few lines and left. I leave, uh, I leave and I just had a good feeling about it or whatever. Then um, Alan called me like a couple of days later and said, I'm coming to get you. Come over to my house. They take me to Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. We go to chicken. We go to Roscoe and Chicken and Waffles. I take my uncle. They talking to me, and, I'm, and then they under the under the table. He had the Minister of Society script, and he's like, he, "You're Kane," and gave me the script just like that. You just read a couple of lines. A couple of lines. It wasn't even an audition like that. It was just more like they knew that what they wanted because they seen me do a, a reenactment on America's Most Wanted, and then they seen the rhythm nation. So in their eyes, they they seen the innocent boy. Because if you see Rhythm Nation, he was a boy, he was kind of innocent, so they seen all that. Okay. You know, and, and America's Mo Most Wanted let them get a chance to see the rough side. Rhythm Nation showed them the vulnerable side, this yeah. loving kid. So you get a role, uh, the starring role, mm -hmm. in a theatrical release. Right. So tell me about how the movie starts to come together with the cast. By the time you were cast, was there anyone else? Locked in yet? When I was cast, nobody really was locked in like that. But Tupac was was signed on, kind of like I, Tupac was kind of signed on. Um, and, and he was I, supposed to play Sh Sharif. Sharif, right? Uh, That's the Muslim friend. He was supposed to play the Muslim friend. Yeah. So uh, so yeah, um, he was signed on to be like Sharif or whatever uh, Tupac was, and that was really the only one I remember that was kind of signed and I and um yeah so O Dog wasn't there yet O Dog wasn't there yet and okay. we were reading for other people Jada nobody was there yet Jada came in and read right Jada Pinkett's in it yeah I, I totally forgot right yes yes right and uh and then you guys went on to have MC8 MC8 I think Saphir made a cameo. Saphir made a cameo. Too Short made a Too cameo. Too Short made a cameo. MC Poo. Yeah, it was, it was like yeah. a hip hop movie. Yeah, it was like it, a yeah. real hip hop like cameo right. kind of like they were throwing in all these Bay Area rappers. I was living in the Bay at the time. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So this is all coming together, and the process starts, but then something happens with Tupac. Right. Now. I had Mo Preem 
come in here and talk to me about it. He was, you know, Tupac's stepbrother. Right. He was running around with Tupac, taking right. him to all the, the reeds and, right. and everything else like that. So he told me, this is the version of the story he told me. Brendan's got a baby. Yeah. Pac let the Hughes brothers direct that video. Oh, I, I didn't Pac know that. Pac put them on. He helped put them on in the game. That was their first big break. One of their first big breaks. So that was done. They know Pac was blowing up as an actor. And um, it was like, yo, Pac, I want you to be in this movie. He's like, all right, I'm down, but I got to do this other shit first. I got to do Poetic Justice first. And then I'm at you. He did Poetic Justice and he didn't got at him. But when he got back at him and they try to act all fly with Pac when he got in rehearsal, like, we need you to read. Why aren't you here all the time? And we're just talking shit. He's like, hold up, hold up, hold up, homie. Then Pac caught him at uh, Spice One's video shoot. The, the story that MC8 told me, from his point of view, he said that... My take on it was every time we got ready to rehearse, he had an opinion about his character. Mm. Every time it came down to him to start reading, he would stop and just start going, well, why my character dank this? Why, why this? Why that? So he wanted them to write in the uh, script why he turned Muslim. Show why. Okay, what? Oh, okay, because I, I guess the, the the depiction of it was supposed to be his little brother had got killed, whatever. But they wasn't going to show all that. Okay. It was just the point of okay. view. So th there was more to the story than just he just showed up late and they... Yeah, okay. he, he didn't want that character. Or make my character so the audience can understand why I'm a Muslim now. And that's what angered him because he wanted his imagery. This is a movie about some gang banging ass living in the hood, okay? If you want me to play the, the righteous dude, then you gonna fucking show why I turned righteous. Okay. You're not just gonna give people the idea that Tupac is just this- Square Muslim dude. Yeah, you know, peace my brothers and all. Yeah. Fuck that. You gonna show a motherfucker why I turned Muslim. Okay. And they didn't want to do it. Okay. And that's what started to fall out. My, my version of it is Tupac came into the, the, the reading. We were all there, me. Uh, I don't know if MCA was there yet. It was me, um, Lorenz, um, Jada. We're, we're all in at the reading or whatever. And uh, Tupac, the, Tupac, we all started rehearsing and reading or whatever. And in the middle of it, Tupac was like, man, I, I don't know. I can't get into this care. It's just... I, I, I need more meat. I need, you know, I need some more, you know, and then Alan Hughes was like, Tupac, you interrupting the, the, the session. Let's just finish reading. So we start reading again and Tupac was like, I'm sorry, I just can't, I just can't get in. And then Alan Hughes was like, Tupac, why are you acting like a bitch? You're acting like a bitch right now. You're acting like a straight bitch. Let's walk, let's step outside. This is what I hear. So Tupac and Alan Hughes step outside. Alan comes back in and Tupac never returns. That was the last time I seen Tupac. So Alan Hughes calls Tupac a bitch. He called him a bitch. And how did Tupac react when he was called a bitch? He just he 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 didn't call him a bitch back. He just he just walked he he just walked out. I guess him and Alan had a relationship. Okay. So I'm not saying that Tupac let Alan call him a bitch and was like, "What well, nigga, what's happening there? And it, wasn't, it was just more like Alan was like, nigga, you acting like a bitch right now. Step outside. So they stepped outside and then uh, they had their conversation and Tupac never showed up again. And then they hired my boy, Vontae Sweet, who plays Sharif. And that was the last time Tupac that, that, was associated with the film. That was the last time Tupac was associated with the film. I didn't know Tupac at the time. I was young and fresh from, uh, from my own block. So I felt a little disrespected at the time. I was like, man, who is this nigga? Come up here interrupting the motherfucker. Like, we trying to do the movie. I'm starring in it. Whoever this nigga is, is fucking up my shit. I need this movie to go. So I didn't, so at the time, Tupac wasn't Tupac. He was a, just a, another nigga that was trying to rap to me. So why you, why you fucking up my shit? That's how I felt. Were you and Tupac, before that, that outburst, were you guys interacting at all or not really? 
Um, not really. Not really. We wasn't really, we wasn't really in, interacting. He he apologized for, for for like his outburst, like when he was in. I'm sorry, no disrespect to the cast. He did that, you know. But I didn't really um, I didn't really I didn't really know him like that. Okay, so it was basically a bunch of strangers on the set yeah. starting the process. Yeah. Like how how long into the the filming did this actually happen? This was the rehearsal before we even start filming. 